To the southeast of the Bethesda ruins, we discover the Chrysalis building. For those of you who don't already know, Chrysalis was a pre-war motor vehicle manufacturer that created the Corvega and Highwayman lines. A Corvega factory does exist a short walk south from Canterbury Commons, which I will be covering in a later video. Out front we see a pile of rusty cars, no doubt belonging to the employees. Not too far from that we see a billboard advertising an atomic V8 Corvega, no doubt the latest model released before the Great War. Below that there's a display model that's seen better days, and behind that is the entrance to the building. Inside we are greeted by super mutants. I have no idea how the Overlord got that close without making any noise. Before searching the lobby we can head through a passageway and hear what a super mutant would class as a joke. With the jokesters taken care of, we can head back to the entrance and take a look around. There is of course the super mutant overlord we can search, and grab ourselves a tri-beam laser rifle. Behind the receptionist desk we find some ammo, and another display model. This one is in better condition than the one outside and still has its original colour, although it has been crushed by fallen debris and a filing cabinet. Climbing on top we can take a look at the upper floor. No enemies, that's good. Branching off from this section are four open passageways and a single locked door. After picking the very hard lock, we can see that it leads down to the Chrysler's basement. Let's save that for later and take one of the passageways instead. Taking the closest opening to the left side of the front door leads us to the smoldering remains of the two laughers. A little further on we can hear the shuffling of another mutant but I think it's coming from upstairs. The first room to the left doesn't have anything of interest, but we can go through a hole in the wall to find a Nuka-Cola Quantum. As if by magic, the nearby mutant has entered the room, but we do manage to remain hidden and land a critical hit. Back into the passageway and turning left, we continue onwards where more rooms become available, but there's also more mutants. Inside the first room to the left we find Jet, more ammunition for the assault rifles, a first aid box, Radex, and another first aid box. We can backtrack from here, where we find a staircase leading to the upper floor. I do plan on heading up, but I would like to search this lower floor first. Around a corner we come across a terminal, which opens a door with a set of descending stairs. I hate it when this happens. We now have a staircase leading to a basement, a staircase leading upstairs, and now another set of stairs leading to god knows where. After thinking it through, I shut the door, completely ignoring the contents of the room, and continued down the hallway to the final room of the first floor. At the centre of it we can disarm a bear trap, and that's really all there is. The end of the passage brings us back into the lobby, so let's head over to the ascending staircase and take a look up there. At the top we have the choice to go either left or right. It kinda looks like a dead end to the right so I decided to go that way first. Around the corner we find a second Nuka-Cola Quantum inside a vending machine and then it's just a dead end from there. Turning around we can head into the ladies restroom. Inside the second stall on the right would have been a garden gnome holding up a sign but as you can see the door from the first stall knocked it over. Thanks game. There is another gnome in the third stall, but the door from the fourth took care of that one too. For those of you wondering, the signs read, 
we're dying buttholes, and help us. I know we didn't get the enjoyment of seeing the gnomes resting atop the toilets with their angry signs, but here's a gnome trick shot. Excellent! Further along, the passageway forks off into two directions. Let's head straight and see where it goes. There's another bear trap that needs disarming in front of a closet. Inside are more rifle rounds, a first aid box on the wall. We can also pull out a wooden crate where we see an empty whiskey bottle stashed between two books. I guess someone liked to have a little drink with their lunch. Next, we can head through a hole in the wall and into another office. The only thing we find here is Psycho. The door leads back into the corridor where we can now turn right, go around a corner, and start searching the upper section of the entrance. Heading to the left first, we come to a corner and a box with a radix amongst some other junk. There isn't anything else until reaching the door we could see across the room, but before heading down we can run over to the radio and turn that off. Fun fact, that song was maybe by the Ink Spots and was the opening song of Fallout 1. Now heading down the door we just neglected leads to a tripwire connected to a steel girder and just beyond that is the room directly above the room with the descending stairs. Inside we find a collection of computer chairs and computers, all broken. Back at the entrance we can finish searching for mentats, shotgun shells and a whopping 22 308 rounds. Now the only room left to explore in this area is the one with the terminal outside. Let's go check it out. There is a hole in the ceiling, but if you remember, that was the room with the collection of broken computers. On the table nearby is a scoped 44 Magnum, a guns and bullets skill book, and Magnum rounds. Lastly, inside a container near the toolbox is Buff Out, and that brings us to the downstairs. Now, I thought this was going to lead to the same location as the door in the lobby, but that wasn't the case. Instead of leading to the basement, we come to the lower offices. Down here, we immediately find some more 44 ammo, dirty water, pre-war money, and what I think is another stash belonging to one of the long ago employees. Work must have been pretty bad to be hitting the hard stuff. Across from the whiskey is a first aid kit and a bear trap. I tried dropping a tire onto it to set it off, but it didn't do anything. I guess they only work on enemies and ourselves. The doorway leads to a long corridor with branching rooms where we hear the sound of a dog panting. Behind a very hard locked door, I thought I would get to see the animal, but instead, they're one room over. Inside here though, we see a couple of rotting Brahmin corpses. There is no way they wandered in here by themselves. They must have been brought here by the super mutants, most likely as a source of living food. Leaving the Brahmin behind, we see another room leading south but first I want to see those dogs. They are behind another very hard lock. Hello there. There is a hole in the wall and going through does reveal another not so vicious dog. Under the desk in the corner are some chems and on the desk is a fat stack of pre-war money. There is another locked door but opening it just leads back into the corridor. From here there are two passageways leading south and a closed door just between them. We'll cover them all in good time but for now, let's head down the first one we came across. I can hear super mutant footsteps, but I don't see any mutants. Let's start searching and be wary of our surroundings. Did you see that? It looked like the second mine I threw knocked the minigun from his hands. Or perhaps that was just a delayed reaction from the first explosion. Either way, we got the master key. The room is a complete mess. Every room below is visible from up here. Metal sculptures and gore bags are mostly all we find. But amongst it all, we find more super mutants.
This upper floor does have a few items worth collecting, such as the bottle of purified water between two books, a sniper rifle with four rounds inside a cabinet, another sniper rifle with four more rounds, the largest gore bag I've ever seen, not to collect, just pointing that out, and a pugilism illustrated inside a plastic bucket, which could very easily be missed. And then we have in total, five strange meat and a first aid box. Now the other corridor we saw from earlier also leads into where we are now. Same place, different side. As for the door in the center, it leads to this room. We're just coming to it from the other side. The only thing in here is a pre-war book. Now, let's head downstairs where the footsteps have been coming from. Down here are essentially where the mutants have been keeping more gore bags and what I believe are the skeletons of the employees. There's quite a few of them, but through it all we find sugar bombs inside a refrigerator and another box inside the Eatertronic, and then a stealth boy sitting on a table in one of the rooms. Inside another we see bloody handprints trying to escape through the hole in the ceiling. I wonder if they ever made it out. Next is the basement. Inside the Overlord's pockets, do super mutants have pockets? Meh. We can pick up a mini nuke and our second tri-beam laser rifle. Thanks. The basement is separated into many rooms, mostly offices all connected by dark corridors with more mutants. Shut up, John. The things worth mentioning down here would be the Radaway on an employee's desk, don't forget the caps, and the other two on the shelf. Also, Radex. Deeper inside we find a lot of centaurs, but there's 308 rounds so it ain't all bad. The offices fall away, replaced by whatever these things are, and a big book of science. The last room to break off from the corridor leads into a break room where there's another box of sugar bombs and another overlord. One more tri beam to the collection. One of the rooms of the break room has been smashed in. Going through gets us a second stealth boy, make that three. And that's it for the basement. Heading through the door the last Overlord came through leads back up to the main entrance of the building. And there we have it, the Chrysalis building and the many mutants who inhabit it. If you've enjoyed the video, then consider leaving a comment, liking the video, sharing it with a friend, subscribing to see more, and enabling notifications to avoid missing any activity. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next adventure.